Hello, um, today is um, February the 11th, 2019. I'm Jackie, and I promised my daughter I'd make a short uh, tape on the subject of, uh, well, a very important subject that she thinks I should talk about because a lot of people are suffering with family members who have schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. I happen to have two children out of my three that uh, were uh, diagnosed and are suffering from schizophrenia, schizophrenic um, and bipolar dis disorders. Um, my, my daughter, uh, who is now 26, she uh, has a bipolar disorder with... Um, manic depression and suicidal tendencies. Um, uh, she was diagnosed with it after her father died in 1997. Um, she was six years old at the time. A lot of people thought that it was some sort of game back then. They didn't take schizophrenia very serious back then uh, in the 90s. <laughs> Especially in little children, because uh, that's when it was just starting to show up, I want to say. Um, but it was very serious because she actually tried to take her own life at six. Was uh, admitted into the hospital uh, where she stayed for two weeks. Well, me too, because, you know, when your six-year-old goes into the hospital, you basically are there too. I'm not going to let my child just stay up in there like that. So, um, she stayed there for two weeks. We got her, uh, situated, that's the word, southern word, situated, on meds, and then they let her go home with me, um, where, uh, my life turned basically upside down. It was, it was hard, many, many years. I had a son at that time who was doing uh, very well, totally opposite from his sister. Um, but in, uh, when he was 11 years old, he had uh, uh, a head injury um, where he landed on the concrete on the front part of his head and unbeknownst to me that this is where your sensories are, your emotions, your attachments. And as a result of it, as time went by, my son started to experience uh, mania. Um, basically, he lost his attachments. He lost his um, grasp on reality. Uh, found out later... Because when I took him to the hospital, when it happened, they said there was nothing wrong with him. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, by the time he was 14 years old, I was experiencing a drastic change. And not only his personality, but his attachments towards me, myself, and his sisters. It got so bad that I had to uh, actually involve other... Um, individuals um, it wasn't like his sisters his sisters was a self uh, afflicted schizophrenia whereas my son's schizophrenia or rather um, Constance has bipolar and Jalil has schizophrenia but anyway um, with my son's schizophrenia his was a um, very aggressive violent um, type and so he started um, pretty much attacking and trying to hurt everybody <laughs> it, it got so bad that he had to be taken away and, and after that happened he had to continuously be taken away or you know I fear that he might have really really hurt somebody so he's been in and out of the hospital for what is Jalil's 22 now uh, 14, yeah, uh, since 
I want to say uh, 2006 is when things really started going bad. And um, our lives, all of our lives changed. I have a, a younger da daughter who, um, yeah, she suffers from anxiety, but not as severely as her brothers and her brother and sister. So I chose to keep her away from the meds because I noticed some things that happened with the meds. But anywho, uh, that's a whole different subject. Um, I just want to say that um, um, I, I don't know if anybody has any questions or anybody's going to even watch this uh, clip. Um, but if anyone has questions and want to know uh, what I went through, how I went through it, what I did, the agencies that helped me, uh, how I got my son uh, committed into a facility because of his inability to sustain uh, in the public. He, he, he can't uh, maintain and sustain in society uh, because of the severity of his schizophrenia. So I had to have him committed. And my daughter's been in and out of a psychiatric ward uh, since she was six. Uh, she's gone in quite a few times, uh, actually. So um, that's why I'm making this tape. Uh, in case anybody has a family member who they're suffering with under this, um, this disability, this disease, and they want answers and they want help, so I'm making this tape. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section uh, and I will read and respond to the questions as, as I can. Um, I hope, um, I hope if you do have a family member and you're suffering uh, under the the emotional turmoil of having a relative with schizophrenia or any sort of emotional or mental disorder that impacts your life negatively, that um, you're accepting it, first of all, accept it, uh, and secondly, deal with it accordingly, not, not violently, or violence against violence never works, that's what I've discovered that a lot of people are doing, like, being violent towards the family member, that, that doesn't work. Um, you're going to have to do it the right way to get them the type of help that they need. So, again, um, and I know this was long-winded, but I just wanted to get that in there, um, just in case I don't get any questions. But anyway, um, it, it's, you know, it is what it is. So please leave questions if you have them. And uh, thank you for listening.